Hello there, my name is Bo, and this is the Arturia Drum Boot. It's a drum machine that makes sort of drum sounds. Welcome to Bow Beats, a channel about music production and synthesizers. After working with the drum root for about 2-3 weeks, I can tell you that a lot of the videos on it doesn't do it justice. It's very hard to translate the feel of working with a hardware drum machine with its sequencer, with its workflow, into a video. That's something that is always kind of lost in translation in most videos. Furthermore, I think that the dynamic range of a lot of the sounds, uh, the punchiness of the kick drums, and even some of the other sounds that are, you know, less punchy perhaps, but still have a lot of a lot of uh, uh, dynamic range to them. I think a lot of that is lost as well in translation over to a YouTube video. So I'm not really sure if my video here will show you that as well either. But when I got it and I plugged it into my big system at home, I was kind of I was kind of surprised that it sounded it sounded really good. It sounded really really good. Not all of the sounds, it's pretty well documented that the hi-hats and the snare drum are kind of the weak points of this uh, drum machine, but the kick drums, um, the rim shots, uh, the clap, and some of the other sounds are really good. I really enjoy the, the, the kind of tambourine that it got going on here, the toms, uh, the congas and so on. They sound really nice. And this, this was something that was quite surprising to me because of all the videos I've been watching. I think this goes to show that you shouldn't really take a YouTube video all too seriously when it comes to uh, the translation of sound from, from something like a drum machine or uh, a synthesizer in general. So it could be that this video won't do justice either, but let me give it a shot. So I want to start off by talking about the sounds of the drum root. There are 12 channels physically represented here on this device, but there are 17 sounds. A couple of the channels here have buttons that lets you switch between different sounds. And this also corresponds to 17 different sequencer channels. So even though, for example, the rim shot here, and the clave sound, even though they share the same, the same controls for a level here and a rim tone here, even though they share that, they have two different sequencer channels. And, and, and that is important because even though you don't have full control of uh, all 17 voices, you still have access to 17 sequencer channels. And this is all very important because you have access to 17 sounds even though you don't have the physical control for all the 17 sounds. So now I'd like to go over a little bit of the physical layout of the drum root. We have the controls here for the sounds, obviously. The pads that are obviously playable. You also use the pads in order to select the sound. And if you press shift, and the sound, you won't, you won't trigger the sound when selecting the track. And here's the metronome over here. You can turn on and off. You can increase the volume. You can also change the rate at which the, the metronome uh, or the clock division for the metronome. Uh, here are mute and solo buttons. The mutes are actually group mutes. So if I press mute here, you can see that these four light up. If I press two more and press mute and press mute again you can see that all these six channels will be muted for example let me show you and the same goes for the solo button the solo button is also a, 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 like a group solo so when i press this you see that there are five buttons here that light up. So I can actually solo five sounds.
very practical, very hands-on. And this is this goes for the entire design of the drum root. It's super hands-on, very practical. Up here are the main sequence of functions. You have song mode where you can tie different patterns together. You have banks, four of the banks. Each bank contains 16, uh, 16 patterns. And these patterns can be up to 64 steps. This is the kind of area where you change the number of steps for each pattern. It's pretty simple, just shift and you press this button over here. Very hands-on as well. Um, and each pattern can contain, as I said previously, 17 sequence channels, so 17 different sounds that you can use. Now over here are pattern effects. Pattern effects is also something that is very hands-on, very fun. I will show you a little bit later how they work. You have a swing, and you can set swing per track, per current track. You just press this button, and, and, and the selected track, if you change the value here, the value changes per track. And you have global as well, so you can add this, this, this as a variation on the fly. And then you have randomness, and randomness is a lot of fun. I will show you later on how it can really add, add a new dimension to a beat. But you can also apply it uh, to, to the whole entire song, or you can apply it to just a track. And man, I've had a lot of fun with this. So even though, I can tell you right off the bat that even though some of the sounds on the drum boot are a bit lackluster, uh, a couple of them, and some of the sounds are really good, these kind of hands-on, very playable functions that the drum boot comes with you know, I think it really balances out any downsides when it comes to comes to the sounds because it's. I found myself just sitting making drum grooves, and I hope to show you in this video how how much fun it can be, really. And this little strip over here is very interesting. It's a step repeat. Let me show you. And it also creates rolls. I think I have a pattern over here that has a couple of rolls. Let's listen to it. I hope you could pick up that there was a snare roll in there. And, and that is something you can apply per step, per track. So that is really, really interesting. And then we have the output filter up here. You can switch it to a high pass filter, it's it's a low pass to start with. You have the cutoff and resonance, and it sounds something like this. And yet again, you, you see the kind of hands-on approach here with the drum, but it's very quick to just activate it, deactivate it, and I've found myself using it a lot when I was jamming I think you can also use it all to create interesting interesting filter sweeps on the fly when you try to record something. So I think that's very fun. And together with the, I love to use it with the step repeat, something like this. was kind of the overview of the drum root. Now I'd like to create something on the fly here to show you how, how quick and easy it is. And, and, and don't mind the sounds all too much because you can tweak them a lot. And for example, I have here on kick number one, it's more like a tom sound, but, but you'll, I think you'll see how, how fun it is to use it. So let's, let's pick, we're in bank number four here. Let's pick a pattern number five. I think it's empty. Yeah. And I usually go for something like 108 BPM, and I start with the metronome. Let's make the pattern longer, 32 steps. We can add a little snare roll here in, in, in the last part. And 
And now when we have a closed hi-hat, we can try and add some randomness to the hi-hat. And uh, let me add some toms and congas and add randomness to that. And you'll see how easy it is to build something that kind of varies over time. So we have the closed hi-hat and we'll increase the randomness. could even add a little bit of swing to it. And let's add the toms and the randomness as well. From the sequencer, you can of course add accents to certain drum hits. So I think I want to add the accents to the congas. So we press accent, and as you can see, nothing changes here with the lights. But if we press a step, it turns red. That means that it's accented. And let's go all out crazy applying swing and randomness to the entire beat. So watch how I increase the randomness here. As you can hear, adding randomness creates a lot of fun, fun variations. I usually, you know, just add a smidge to, to a couple of tracks in order to create it a little bit more contained. But you can, of course, you know, go all out crazy, add it to, to the entire beat. Uh, for example, just add it as an effect like I did. Um, I think that can be a lot of fun. As well as using, using mute states or solo states in order to, to create kind of a, a breakdown or something and use the, the filter and so on. So all in all, I think you gather that I think this is a very fun drum machine, um, much more so than I initially thought. Uh, like I said, I didn't think a lot of the videos that I saw on it made it justice because a big, big part of what makes the drum boot really great is the superb sequencer. Now, of course, some might argue that sound are more important, um, but I don't think it lacks in the sound department. I just think that it's it's quite analog. I think you need to treat it as such. It's like a mini log, or or even even my Moog Sub Thirty Seven. You know, requires a bit of external effects to really shine. I think you have to think about it like that as well with the drum boot. And I think it sounds really nice as is. But I also think it you know it can really benefit from some compression, some some effects on it, and. I have had no trouble uh, getting it into some of my tunes. For example, if you check my channel, you can see I have a couple of jams where I use the drum boot. I've also used it in my series from jam to finished song. So that is something that I saw. Part, part two is also coming up soon. And I've had no trouble using the drum boot in an entire mix. It was harder than I anticipated to say something critical of the drum boot. Sure, the snare drum could be punchier. Uh, sure, the hi-hats have like a limited range where they sound really good and they and they quickly you know they quickly become become a bit distorted in sound but ultimately it's not an expensive drum machine and for the price I think you get a lot of functionality in the sequencer all the inputs and outputs uh, you get a ton of sounds 17 different sounds and a lot of hands-on playability that is a lot of fun I, I think I, I hopefully showcase this in the video that's a lot of fun just to create a groove on the fly. I was kind of surprised because from all the videos I've seen on it 
I thought I would have more negative things to say about it, or critical things to say about it. But really, um, there's only the few things that I've mentioned, and other than that, I think it's, it's an excellent choice. Of course, if you don't like the sound that you're hearing, maybe you should think once or twice about it, but if you like the kind of analog, kind of old school sound that it got, and you want the the fun, flexible, hands-on sequencer, I think it's an excellent choice. So, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you want to subscribe to the channel for more content about music production, about creativity and about synthesizers. So my name is Bo and I hope you have a very pleasant day. Thank you so much.